Tesla reported earth-shattering deliveries of 308,000 electric vehicles in the final quarter of 2021, bringing their total to 936,000 cars for the year, an insane 87% growth in deliveries. Which is even more impressive when considering the backdrop of chip shortages and supply chain issues that the entire auto industry is struggling with. Now this past week was an eventful one for Tesla, and despite the surprising delivery news, the stock actually closed down about $30 from the end of last year, giving up any gains from the groundbreaking report. It seems that many investors are overly excited about the news and trying to predict how high the stock would go, which counterintuitively is usually a recipe for lower prices. It's important to realize as well that Elon Musk sold 10% of his holdings last year, and although he has more Tesla shares now than when he started thanks to exercising his options, Tesla shares have been diluted as we'll see more clearly later on. Previously, Elon Musk was holding this 10% of shares, which were effectively not being traded. But now there are more overall shares available in the open market, which could mean less support for the stock price even though the selling is done. Now, General Motors delivered an astounding 26 EVs in the final quarter of last year, definitely leading the way for the rest of the auto industry. Have a look at my last video on how GM is getting trounced by Tesla. It looks like, of the other US automakers, Ford is at least much better positioned than GM. We've heard that Ford is planning to double their production plan of the F-150 Lightning from 80,000 units to 150,000. For reference, Ford's F-150 lineup sells about 900,000 vehicles per year into the US market. But it's also not clear yet how Ford will be sourcing enough batteries for these large trucks. Tesla has purposely delayed the Cybertruck launch multiple times as they wait for their own battery production to rise, since vehicles like the Cybertruck and the Semi use a larger number of higher capacity batteries than their other vehicles. No other automaker has invested as heavily as Tesla into batteries, and only Tesla is beginning to ramp up their own in-house designed 4680 cells. So just because Ford's plan is to double their production targets, the F-150 Lightning is just beginning production now. Remember that as Elon Musk always says, prototypes are easy, but production is hard. And electric vehicles are still fairly new for Ford, and there are plenty of dynamics, including dealerships and build quality, which could make it a bumpy road. If you haven't already seen it, watch Sandy Monroe's teardown of the Ford Mustang Mach-E thermal system, which is a little scary for Ford owners. Now, we also saw a display of Tesla's strength in innovation from an unexpected rival, which is the defunct company Nikola. About two years ago, GM almost partnered with Nikola to try and mass-produce the Nikola Badger truck. Of course, by combining a company that can barely produce its own EVs with a company that can only produce image renderings, this deal quickly fell apart. It also shone a light on GM's ability to make good business decisions. Nevertheless, Nikola has had a patent lawsuit against Tesla for quite some time, as they released renderings of a semi-truck that had similar doors to Tesla's semi, a U-shaped windshield, and they sued Tesla for $2 billion. Now, besides the fact that Nikola founder and former CEO Trevor Milton continues to fight criminal charges that he misled investors, he made a mistake by picking a patent fight with Tesla. It's important to realize that even though Tesla has opened up its patents for everyone to use, they can only be used in good faith. If you turn around and sue Tesla, the good faith part goes away, and now all of Tesla's patents come into play, which is something that we've been saying for years, that Tesla still has a massive patent moat even if they are sharing their patents. They are the pioneers of the EV industry, and it almost is guaranteed that if a company has an EV product, they are infringing on Tesla's patents. That's actually one of the reasons why Tesla opened its portfolio to help advance the advent of sustainable energy and not hinder it, which has immensely benefited the global EV industry. It's also designed to save Tesla a lot of time fighting patent battles, which is a huge benefit, except in this particular case. Nikola wanted to try out their luck, and a potential win on this lawsuit probably would have been the only source of value that this company has. 
Nikola doesn't actually sell anything, so they use their image renderings to try and make a quick buck by picking a fight with Tesla's weapon cash. Tesla filed a number of counterclaims and both companies ended up dropping all suits. It turns out that what we've been saying this whole time is correct, that Tesla does in fact have a powerful patent moat and it's actually an excellent strategy to normally avoid tons of lawsuits and patent battles and it certainly helped to end things prematurely in this case as well. Now speaking of semi-trucks, it looks like Tesla's semi will finally be in limited production early this year with Pepsi about to finally take deliveries of the first Tesla semis. In terms of financial results, I like to consider semis as a kicker or an option since it's just a small portion of the business right now and the focus is on Model Y. Eventually, it will simply help to increase the average price of a vehicle that Tesla sells. Elon Musk has said that he will be on the upcoming Tesla earnings call to give an update about the company's roadmap. I'm hoping for an update on the Tesla Semi and the Cybertruck, but these vehicles likely won't be produced in bulk until 2023, as Tesla has previously stated, and hopefully they don't get pushed back any further. And by the way, stop using Yahoo Finance, stop using Google Finance, and have a look at our website, themarketisopen.com, where we have instant stock quotes and financial data going back 10 years, and it's all freely available. This past week, CES has also been taking place, the worldwide electronics show, where companies scramble to show off prototypes and cool tech products, many of which will never see the light of day. Now, we saw that Intel's Mobileye, Tesla's self-driving competitor, present this year, and while most of it was a rehash of previous year's content, they gave a bit more information on how their progress is going. They rely heavily on LiDAR for localizing their vehicle within a high-definition map that they've created. And for autonomous vehicles, they're looking to add yet another type of specialized radar sensor in a few years to help them out with even more redundancy, as it appears that even LiDAR may not be enough for them. They also state that the cost of LiDAR will fundamentally never reach that of a camera or radar. Now, as I mentioned in this video here, which I highly recommend you watch, Mobileye isn't shooting for autonomous driving like Tesla is. What they call robotaxis are more like shuttles that follow their predefined map. This is actually a much smaller market. Mobileye even estimates it closer to 600 million. And what they call Consumer AV is an autonomous vehicle that they're targeting for 2025. And that's the multi-trillion dollar market. That's the only one Tesla is going after. Mobileye explains that if you have a consumer autonomous vehicle, that can also act as a robotaxi, but not the other way around. So a lot of their focus is actually on this intermediate type robotaxi product, which targets the wrong market and shouldn't be confused with Tesla's robotaxi. They require new silicon chips that will only come out in 2025 that they say will enable autonomous cars. To me, this doesn't make much sense because Tesla's current chipset in the vehicle is already about as good as Mobileye's future chipset and sufficient enough to run Tesla's software. Actually, they all but admitted at CES that Tesla is the leader in the space. They call Tesla the flag or the torch that leads them forward when talking about autonomous vehicles. And so if we look at what Tesla is doing, it's not about new chips and in-vehicle hardware and new sensors that will enable self-driving. It's machine learning software powered by server-side hardware, such as Tesla's Dojo training system, which it didn't sound like something Mobileye was even looking at, as they mentioned nothing of the sort. But also Mobileye's approach relies mainly on localizing a vehicle within their HD map. So when they say camera only, it means that they use cameras to locate certain landmarks in order to position the vehicle. This is different from Tesla's approach of using AI to analyze the scene and making decisions without a centimeter level map that needs to be updated in real time. Meanwhile, Elon Musk steals much of the CES thunder by tweeting about FSD beta 10.9 coming out next week, and version 11 with single-stack highway and city software coming out in a month, while raising the price of FSD by another $2,000 in the United States. This shows increasing confidence in the product that keeps improving. I would be interested to know if version 11 will be trained using Tesla's Dojo platform. On the Lex Friedman podcast, Elon Musk recently talked about moving to surround video to train the neural networks. This means that new data will have to be collected from all eight cameras. 
Of course, Tesla has been doing this, but Elon Musk also mentioned that there's always been filtering that's typically done on camera footage before it's displayed to the user, whereas Tesla is more interested in the raw camera data before it's processed. Elon says that the camera not only picks up photons from even dim light, which would be highly useful for low light applications, but also this could save 13 milliseconds of time, which would help reduce jitter while driving. To me, this seems like not only would the neural nets need to be retrained, but this new raw data also needs to be collected. But that said, Tesla now has a fleet of over 2 million vehicles with all the camera hardware they need, and they should also be able to update the camera firmware over the air to get the raw data that they want. It's possible that they may have already started doing this months ago. But I think if any competition wants to copy Tesla, they would need to do something similar, which may be very difficult since most other car brands don't have over-the-air firmware updates. So this appears to be a next level chess move to improve accuracy beyond industry competitors. Since Tesla has vertically integrated so well, no one is even structured in such a way to be able to copy Tesla without doing significantly more work, putting them even further behind. Now let's switch gears and have a brief look at Tesla's financials to estimate their current quarter and point out some interesting things. The average price of a Tesla was a bit over $47,000 in the third quarter. I think this will rise as Tesla has increased prices. Even the rear wheel drive Model 3 is now selling for $45,000, so revenue should increase as well, probably even beyond my estimates. There is also a bit of delay because Tesla has a backlog of deliveries for people who ordered when the price was cheaper, so we should continue to see this work its way into higher revenue. At the same time, costs will go up as Tesla stated that they try to forecast their future costs and raise prices accordingly to try and line them up. So even though revenue is going up, costs will take some of that away in terms of profitability. Nevertheless, Tesla is seeing amazing demand and they're able to pass on cost increases easily to the consumer. Their long-term goal, however, is to have lower, more affordable car prices, which will only happen once supply chains and semiconductor shortages ease off. So I'm estimating about $15 billion in automotive revenue. I like to be conservative here and I said that energy revenue will be the same, but there's underlying strength in energy that depends on Tesla's battery production. So I think when they report the quarterly earnings, we'll get a better sense of their production capabilities, not just for energy but for batteries as well. According to reports, Tesla is planning to grow megapack production to 50 gigawatt hours by 2023, and they recently opened a new Megapack factory, which we highlighted a few months back, will be massive for giving the energy division the respect that it deserves. Overall, I said Tesla could make almost $17 billion in revenue, while analysts are expecting $15.75 billion. Now, I used the same ratios as last quarter for costs, and just had small increases for R&D since I think Tesla continues to hire people like crazy. In the end, I got about $2.5 billion in net income, which would be about $900 million more than just the last quarter, their best quarter ever. Now, because Elon Musk has been exercising his options and diluting the shares, I think the basic amount of shares will converge towards the diluted number, maybe not all the way like I have here, but at least somewhat since there are more Tesla shares outstanding now than there were before he started exercising his options. The analysts have raised their estimates ever since Tesla smashed the delivery numbers from buck ninety-two to $2.09. Although my estimates show $2.22, still ahead of the analysts, I'm actually estimating on the gap numbers and the analysts use non-gap. So you can add back about $0.50 cents per share to my estimates, bringing them to $2.72, much higher than the analysts if I'm in the ballpark. Now I'd like to note that Tesla's third quarter results have been stronger than their fourth quarter results for at least the past three years in a row. There's usually end of year expenses or bonuses that tend to reduce the profitability of Q4, and we saw last year Tesla miss estimates because of that. Again, I think Tesla will have a killer quarter, but that's something to be aware of as people tend to get overly excited. Tesla has now had 10 profitable quarters in a row, so any argument against profitability can be thrown out the window. It's also very interesting to point out that Tesla's earnings are highly leveraged in the sense that they grew deliveries at an astounding 87% in 2021. But when Wall Street talks about growth, they always mean earnings growth. And so if I use my non-GAAP estimates for the quarter, Tesla could earn $6.89 for the year. 
Last year, they made $2.24, so they could triple their earnings over last year, which is a 207% growth rate. So while everyone complains about Tesla trading at 150 times earnings or whatever, their earnings growth more than supports that type of PE multiple. So do you think Tesla will be able to beat the analyst's fourth quarter earnings estimates or will the analyst excitement cause numbers to be raised faster than Tesla can keep up? And let me know in the comments how much you think Tesla will earn in the fourth quarter of 2021. Please hit the like button and subscribe, we would really appreciate that. And a huge shout out to all of our patrons that help to support our channel. Your support helps us to continue to make great content. Thank you guys so much for watching.